Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive, Daniel here. All right, before we continue with the official uh, deep dive into the depths of Shadows of Brimstone, and we are going to continue looking at things uh, back with the mission packs, I recently did a big order through the Flying Frog Productions website, and I got my order uh, yesterday. And so I thought I would just share with you guys what I purchased. You can kind of see the kinds of things you get um, when you purchase. There is some like non-retail things here, some retail things, and some card packs. So let's start off with these. These are really cool. I have no idea where these came from when they started introducing um, these types of expansions. I don't follow games. Like, I'm not somebody who who is glued to Kickstarter. Once I back something, typically 9 out of 10 times, I back and forget until it arrives at my door. Um, I don't follow games. Stuff comes out all the time, and I'm like, like, oh, I have no idea. Where did this come from? Um, I'm just... Yeah, I just, I'm just not really interested in like following new releases um, as, as kind of like, like a, a devoted fan. So, and the, one of the reasons why I participate in the hobby like that is for this exact reason, because I am often surprised. You know, I'll go to the Flying Frog Productions website, uh, their web store, like once a year or something, and find things that I had no idea were even out. And that is super fun for me to, like, not know stuff. So these are enemy supplemental packs. And what they do is they add, like, special character enemies, named enemies, to the um deluxe enemy packs i'm not sure how many they have but i know for sure i am going to try to order as many as they have now because i think these are super cool so this pack here adds two named enemies captain burns and old one-eyed jackson to the um the scafford gang deluxe enemy pack so that is an enemy pack of, of, uh, of bandits, of mutated bandits that you can buy. That was one of the earlier deluxe enemy packs that they sold. And now they have augmented that with like two super powerful villains. And so you get this guy, Captain Burns here. He's a mutant outlaw. He's legendary. And you can see his stats there. He has a, a, an ability called Give Him Hell, Boys comes with a scaffold pistol and then he also of course has a brutal side and then we have here old one-eyed jackson that is a really cool drawing i love him he has a void eye and a band of misfits he augments other scaffold models now i am assuming that they are also selling the like bespoke um, custom mini for these guys I, I probably won't be buying them unless they have a whole set that you can buy. Um, I might purchase them. I'm not sure. What I would probably do is if I were to play these guys in a game, I would just use a normal model and mark it somehow with a token saying that, hey, this is old One-Eyed Jackson or this dude right here is Captain Burns. Uh, and then you also get some cards with the... Um, with the enemies and the those two gentlemen, the Scafford guys, they come with um, your your threats, so you're going to add these to your um, your deck of threat cards, so you can have a chance to fight these guys. And of course, you will have your low, medium, high, and epic threats. So, ah, oh, great art there. That is super cool. So this you can fight one-eyed Jackson, two Scafford Gang, and one Darkstone Brute. That's on the low side. Wow, that is. <laughs> that's a pretty brutal fight there uh captain burns and a d3 plus one scafford gang captain burns and the darkstone brute in the scafford gang one-eyed jackson d3 plus one scafford gang and two darkstone brutes and then three darkstone brutes on the on the uh high difficulty and then there is the uh cards for the uh epic 
So really cool. You could kind of probably use these guys as uh, when we when we get to the video where I'm going to talk about like how I would set up a campaign for this using hex crawl. And I would do so using a lot of the hex crawl rules, but doing a boss uh, hunt where you take all of your like mini bosses you have, your uh, normal bosses, and then your your extra large enemies like like uh, the, like Belial here. I would use these guys as a uh, kind of a, a mini mini boss or something like that. And then you have this mutant uh, satchel as a gear card and a scaffold saber. Now you could just mix these into your mine artifacts and your normal gear cards to draw randomly. Another thing that I would do when I play with these guys is I would keep these out. I would keep these separate, not mix these cards in. And then as a reward for killing one of these two guys, I would give either this piece of gear or this weapon. So that way you get to kind of see the stuff that comes with just this expansion. So really cool. Now this uh, enemy's supplemental pack here, it's for the, uh, the, the wasteland guys in the blasted wastes. So we have uh, Solarius Dracoth and uh, Tario Gant. Again, the names and the way they look, they must have been inspired by uh, a Princess of Mars, the Burroughs uh, fiction there. Um, always leads the Sons of Dracoth and always leads the Krakenborn. So um, when you encounter those Wasteland warrior enemies and you draw their faction, those are the factions that you're going to have to face in order to uh, face off against Solarius Dracoth and Tario Gaunt. He's got some tech gear, leadership. This guy looks really powerful. He would be a really great kind of mini boss probably. Then there's his brutal side there. Four combat dies, three damage, three defense, 12 health plus six per hero. And then we have, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Tar Rio Grant here, Gant. Fanatical, endurance, he has armor, a battle cry, swirling attack, brutal blade, tribal shield, five combat dice. Wow, that's huge. Seven for the brutal side. Ouch, man, this guy could totally do some damage. And then they come with the following cards here. So you get a Otherworld Threat to add to your Blasted Waste. So a way to um, add some more enemy variety to your Blasted Wastes there. And then two different artifacts. Actually, another Blasted Wastes um, encounter card. And then you're going to get two, blast, or two um, artifacts here for the Blasted Wastes. A Brutal Rust Axe and a Vento Warp Pistol. And then you're going to get um, no easy threats in this one. So they are, I, th I think these guys are probably more difficult than the uh, Scafford gang. And so I would treat these guys definitely more as, as mini bosses. So you get your medium threats there. Your uh, difficult, your high threats. Really cool art on these uh, threat cards. Some of the best I've seen. And then a couple epic threats. So really cool. This was a really great surprise to find. I had no idea that they were doing this, that they were making these uh, named legendary enemies to fight. Um, I hope they continue to do so, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come up with next for that kind of expansion. Really cool. And then I got two new enemies, and now these are large, extra large sized enemies, but they are not deluxe expansions. So what you're going to get in the normal enemy expansion is you're just going to get your model, an information sheet, their stat card, and your uh, threat cards. You won't get any cards that like augment them or any cards to add to any other decks in your normal enemy packs. So this is the Magma Giant. I'm pretty stoked for this guy because he does get added to the Caverns of Cinder, which again, now that they've added all the stuff to Caverns of Cinder, Caverns of Cinder, which once started kind of mediocre, is now like a really cool world to explore. 
And so this says, uh, rising up out of the burning pools of a firing magma that filled the caverns of cinder, these gargantuan creatures are made from molten rock. Towering over the other inhabitants of their domain, the magma giant smashes everything in sight with its burning fists of hate-filled rage. And there's your contents that you're going to get there. And if we take a look at what comes in the box here. So this is cool. It comes with uh, some colored D8s. He uses a uh, special magma colored D8s for stuff. Uh, we have his information sheet here, his character sheet, unspeakable terror, hardening surface, massive fists, burning smash, towering and tough. He's immune to critical hits. He only has three combat dice, so not too bad. Each hit does three damage. Uh, his range is on a six up mainly on a four up there says elite chart and his brutal side and then you'll get this information sheet which just has like a little bit of lore at the top uh, a little bit of information kind of telling you how to use your threat cards and then this comes with more lava markers which if you've been collecting the shadows of brimstone brimstone stuff over the years you have so many of these and so many of these um, you could probably just keep those unpunched in a box or something and then you're going to get your um your assembly guide that shows you how to put the model together and then there is what the model looks like when it comes on its sprues there's its large base so it is a pretty large enemy so that's cool i like the different size enemies it's kind of fun to set them up and and, and look at the scale difference between them and the normal enemies and heroes and um, I like adding these things to, uh, to, especially to Caverns of Cinder. Oh yeah, and then we have our cards, our pack of cards that this comes with. Again, it's just a little pack of cards. You're just going to get your threat cards. And it looks like an information card for your lava spaces, your burning markers. And this is all an epic threat. So remember, when you're only playing with one or two heroes, you, according to the rules, you actually never draw epic threats, which is kind of a bummer. Um, but you could always house rule it and draw them anyways. And you're going to get, um, they're going to have these different symbols up here for different um, expansion packs and your normal one there. Um, what does that say, actually? I forgot to read about that. So your threat cards here. The Magma Giant is a terrifying boss monster. Okay, so he would be considered a boss. Um, several different epic threat cards come in this set, including those specifically intended for uh, Caverns of Cinder, Belly of the Beast, and Blasted Wastes. So you can use um, him. He's like represented in all three of those expansions, those other worlds. Uh, the world-specific epic threat cards have a world icon and label for the other world and are considered an other world epic threat. These, these may be mixed into your normal epic threat deck to add variety, but are marked with a world icon so when facing an epic threat in another world, players can simply look through their epic threat deck and use only threats from that world if desired. Very cool. So that's cool that this magma giant is uh, will be located in all kinds of different other worlds. And then the other large enemy pack I got is the Wasteland Terralisk. And this is added to the Blasted Wastes. So this says, tunneling beneath the desert sands, this massive armored creature is one of the scariest predators in the Blasted Wastes. Often laying in wait just below the surface, it rears up from the shifting dunes to devour its prey whole. There's your box contents. Let's take a look at this guy real quick. Same type of stuff here, except you're not going to get those little cardboard chits for anything this guy does. There is your, um, your mini on the sprues there. Here is your information card. The Wasteland Terralisk. It's going to tell you about its tentacle maw, uh, tell you how to set up your threat cards, and then your assembly instructions. There is your enemy um, stat sheet, Terror 3, Burrowing Tunnel, Chitin Plating, and Tentacle Maw. He has no ranged combat. He rolls eight combat dice. Wow. 
he hits on a four up. Each one only does two damage, but man, eight dice. Wow. That's like, I think that's the max you can roll in a single roll in this game. I think they have, they have officially eroded that, that eight is like the maximum you can ever roll for combat. I might be mistaken, but I remember reading that somewhere. And then here is your threat cards. You're going to get um, low threat. So you can face this guy as a low threat, which is nice, or a medium threat or a high threat. So this guy isn't really considered a boss. He would be maybe a mini boss or prob no, probably not even a mini boss, just a, just a big regular enemy. And then you're going to get your epic threats and you're going to get your threat cards for your other world for your blasted wastes. So you can add him into the blasted wastes. So like I said, when we were looking at the Blasted Wastes, I hadn't bought, I hadn't purchased any of the expansions for Blasted Wastes. And now we're gonna be taking a look at a lot of them. So when I mentioned that the threat deck in the Blasted Wastes was a little bare, uh, this will help to augment that a little bit. So we'll have a little more variety in your um, Epic Waste Encounters or Blasted Waste Encounters, excuse me. And speaking of Blasted Wastes and the um, canyons, I got the Red Rock Gulch. So this is a game supplement. This adds encounters for your canyons um, world. This is artifacts for your canyons. Burning Sands, these are encounters for the Blasted Wastes. Blasted Waste Artifacts. Daily events for your barter town. I am super excited to uh, look at that. And then this is one of the coolest supplements, I think, in the game. It adds a whole bunch of uh, prayers, blessings, and judgments for your priest characters, for your preachers. And then some new personal items. Okay, so let's take a look here at the Holy Expedition game supplement. There's what you're going to get. You're gonna get one of these adventure cards, which you can use to kind of add a thematic overlay, like I was saying, um, to an entire mission. And what this does is, as long as there is at least one holy hero in the party, the heroes may choose to make any mission a holy expedition with the following modifiers. Unholy encounters. Whenever the hero draws one or more encounters, roll a d6. On the roll of three up, also draw one unholy encounter. And then you have these unholy enemies. Demons un and undead, they have more uh, higher stats and different powers. And then whenever a threat card is drawn, each hero may recover a grit or remove a corruption point. And then we have a trait that we can add to the enemies who will become corrupted. And this will give them an ad some additional abilities. So that's pretty cool. You're gonna get a few new um, mine encounters that are going to be marked with this unholy. So that way you know that it's part of this unholy expedition set. So you're gonna get gruesome display, servants of darkness, blasphemous markings, confronting evil and guiding light. All super thematic there. And then you're going to get, what is it? Four judgments and four blessings. So new prayers to add to your uh, preacher characters. You will get Holy Vision, Consecrate, Fortitude, Guide, and then Ruin, Wrath, Voice of Command, and Exorcism. Super cool, I love this little pack. This little pack is awesome. I really do like these little card expansions that the frogs put out. They are a little expensive, 10 bucks each, but if you wait for a sale, you can often get three for two. And um, for me, like $10 is kind of just an impulse buy, um, like a gaming impulse buy. And it's just fun to, to only spend $10 and get, you know, get some new cards for a game that you really like. I wish more games had smaller expansions like this that just add stuff to the things I already have for a game I really love. Now you get some more personal items. So remember the personal items are things that you draw when you create your character. These are items that can never be lost, stolen, sold. These help to, um, you know, to add some character to your characters. 
So when adding this supplement to your games, a hero may draw two and choose one. And so, like I've said before, these are often the things that I will use to kind of flesh out my character's backstory. So here you're going to get Bloodstained Book, Letter from the President. That is so cool. That is like a Hateful Eight. Uh, you know, Samuel L. Jackson had the Lincoln Letter. It, I wonder if they just could have called it the Lincoln Letter. That would have been a super cool nod to a great movie. Um, a Silver Harmonica, Faded Photograph. A heritage locket, an old wanted poster, weather newspaper, your father's pistol, a broken arrowhead, a membership ring. Uh, maybe like one of if you had this, maybe your character, his, his or her uh, parent or grandparent was part of the cult of the Crimson Hand or something. Uh, legacy bullets, a black feather, a gold medal. Old War Wound, that's really cool. And a Travel Hat. All right, lots of neat things there to give birth to interesting ideas. And here we go, the Blasted Waste Daily Event. So the Blasted Waste, the Barter Town, has not had daily events yet. Oh man, the back of those cards, it looks awesome. That is super nice art. I love that Blasted Waste expansion, and this just makes me love it even more. So now you get to draw a whole bunch of new things when you are visiting the barter town. Dust and Wind. Probably get four of these. Yeah, that's nothing, really. These are like the, the normal day in town cards that just kind of uh, throttle the deck. And then you get Man the Walls, New Arrivals, Ghost Town, Burning Sky, you better watch your, just watch yourself. Something in the sand. Underground detonation. Workshop monolith. Marketplace prices down. Marketplace prices up. Who runs the barter town? I think that's the first time that they've actually used that phrase in reference to a super criminally... Uh, Vilified movie, Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. I love that movie. I don't care what anybody says. I've said it before, but the Mad Max series is my favorite film franchise. And I like every single movie. And I love Beyond Thunderdome. It is, it's probably the most like pure fun of the Mad Max movies. And now here we have our artifacts that we can find in the Blasted Waste. So these will just get added to your Blasted Waste artifact deck. A Desert Pike, got two of those. Rusted Shackles, two of those. A Cargo Manifest, two of those. A Railgun, cool weapon. A Vento Glaive, Insulated Gloves, Qatar Necklace, Arm Wraps, Acidic Parasite, awesome, another parasite. Minus three health, immune to poison effects, but your corruption resistance is reduced by one. At the start of each adventure, you gain a personal revive token if you don't already have one. And so you can die and come back to life. That is pretty cool. The Mark IV Warden's Head. Oh, that is awesome. A Shock Rod and the Calabara Cooling Vest. Dune-esque there. Okay, love those. And then we have our Burning Sands. This is Encounters in the Blasted Waste. So these cards here will just get added to your encounter deck for the Blasted Wastes. You can have Hive Town Patrol, two of those. Ion Storm, two of those. Those will infect, uh, won't have an impact if you are on the interior, it looks like. Hero that is not on an interior map takes those hits. So if you're indoors, you're protected from the Ion Storm. The Black Wall Wrecked Warden. That must be what that uh, Warden's Head thing is from. Sinking Sand, Long Years Betrayal, Broken Helmet, Void Twister, New Arrivals, Streak in the Sky, 
uh, what does it say? The blinding streak of a crashing ship flashes across the sky like a shooting star, burning through the atmosphere as it's pulled in by the planet's inescapable gravity well. As you stare into the sky, you are awed by the alien beauty of the flickering rays of light on the horizon. That's really nice. That's a really nicely written little piece of flavor text. Advance the sun track one position. If this moves the sun track to dusk or dawn, every hero may also recover a grit. Nice. That's all I have. Altar to the Great Kraken and Caustic Geyser. That does not sound nice there. All right, then we have our Canyons artifacts. So these are going to be cards that you are going to add to your artifact deck for when you are in the Canyons. A Ghost Warrior Hatchet, you got two of those. A Letter Home, two of those. A 12th Cavalry, uh, 12th Cavalry Pistol couple of those bad boys. The 12th Cavalry Captain's Saber. Nice sword there. A Ghost Warrior Bow. Nice. A range 10. Wow, that's cool. Critical hits on a 5 or 6. Nice. A Cavalry Bugle. That's cool. Uh, another harmonica. Different kind of harmonica. A cavalry Hat. Darkstone Arrowheads. Tribal Ghost Dance for tribal characters only. And the Shaman's Hairdress for magic characters only. All right. And one more pack of cards to look at. Here we have our Red Rock Gulch. And these are Canyon Encounters. So these are encounters that you would just add to your existing encounter deck for when you are playing in the canyons. We've got Watchers on the Ridge. We've got another one of those. Smoke Signals, two of those. The Mountains Slumber. Storm Clouds, something in the river. The Hanging Tree, Outlaw Trail. The Last Man, Red Rock Shootout. Floating Barrels, The Devil's Tongue. Firefly Valley and the White Buffalo. So, all right, well, hey, I hope you guys enjoyed this kind of uh, just little unboxing of the uh, loot that I ordered from uh, Flying Frog Productions website, all for Shadows of Brimstone. Always fun to get new little things for a game you love. Sorry, right, guys, we'll, we'll be back um, in a day or so and we'll start looking at the mission packs and our continuing deep dive into the depths of Shadows of Brimstone. Take it easy. Bye-bye.